right a big hello and welcome and well it surely is a big day on behalf of the ashank desai center for leadership and organizational development it is a pleasure for me to welcome you all to yet another idea speak session at i am ahmedabad yes we do have an exciting idea exchange ahead of us and first things first leadership idea speak it is yet another marquee initiative at i am ahmedabad this is a platform that brings the big ideas the big insights of global experts and top leaders to bring forth the most trending leadership issues and who better to do it for today's session than sunita lal from ather energy sunita of course needs no introduction besides all her other stellar achievements and pursuits she runs the people function at india's top e mobility company ather energy Welcome to the Leadership Idea Speak, Sunita. We appreciate your taking time out. Thank you, Piyush. Appreciate right. you recognizing Ather and also yeah. inviting me. No, no, e-mobility and uh, the the future is green, and we are all realizing how important it is to really get ourselves on the right side. All right, talking about today's few questions that I had in my head, and when I was doing the research, I realized that. as a center for leadership we generally try and focus on the challenges and the future strategies that leaders employ so in the world of e mobility sunita leadership challenges i am imagining can be electric so can you shed light on your strategy for navigating this dynamic landscape i mean in steering the future what leadership challenges at an organizational level really guide your road map to success i think you are stealing my line by saying electric <laughs> that should be my line <laughs> all right but having said that um, the organizations in the future because electric uh, um, is the future and also it is a very nascent industry the challenges of the future is going to be with uh, finding the li- right leaders where there is no Uh, answers that have been written and known known path you know we have to go to a place of unknown and find answers for which you need leaders who are willing to go through the messiness okay. right. and uh, while they carry their experience from other organizations or other industries and they come into ev but they should also know that this is a very new format then yeah. the leadership has to be challenges will be uh, having leaders willing to start working from scratch willing to leave some of their experiences out and trying to <clears throat> experiment with the newness that is existing in this industry i think that is the most important part leaving the comfort zone and developing resilience because anything new requires you to iterate those many times you know which means that you should have a lot of resilience so yeah. those are the leaders and that will be the leadership challenge that we will be looking at oh that is so well articulated very well so on navigating change and fostering innovation we all do realize that change is one of the key ingredients sunita of sparking innovation across economy across society i'm sure also in e mobility so could you share with us your insights on riding this electrifying wave of transformation and really staying ahead see i talked about the two ingredients uh, for uh, going fostering change you know one is uh, resilience and second is willing to be uh, comfortable with messiness you know those two are important see when organizations come up with innovative products or ideas uh, what the outside world looks at is that aha moment you know mm-hmm. wow they've come up with something but actually you have to go into the organization and see what has been their journey to to that point and that journey is being patient willing to be okay with failure going through messiness resilience and iterating and uh, having uh, having enormous amount of patience to listen to people because it is not only the leader who has the uh, idea but everyone who is working on the project will also have ideas and willing to willing to listen to them and understand what's happening i think this is this is the fabric uh, that is required for innovation to happen and uh, you, it, everyone is looking at that 
a moment where the product is out and they're saying, wow, this is cool. But behind that cool product is the sweat and the many steps of failures and iteration and the resilience, you know, that takes us to that point. Very well. I know you've used it twice and I wanted to become yet more clear on this word messiness that you are using. What exactly would you mean by that, Sunita? Mess messiness comes from the point of uh, not knowing, you know. See, innovation is reaching out from the knowing to the not knowing and we're willing to be surprised. Okay, And that is the messiness I'm talking about where... Uh, in the context is, of yeah. uncertainty, I guess. It's uncertainty. And yeah. uh, inherently, as leaders, we want to have control. Yeah. But innovation, uh, in whatever controlled fashion you work with, there are also surprises that come along the way. Okay. That is the messiness I'm talking about, you know, your, and also failures. Failure is always messy, you know. It takes away your uh, ability to th think that you can uh, do it again, you know. So, and also your, uh, you have to go up and tell some, your own team members, the organization, probably investors to say why you failed, okay. I think all of that is, uh, and there is a lot of uh, shame attached to all of this, Piyush. Mm -hmm. In reality, yeah. I think yeah. organizations, when I say messiness, this is the messiness, you know. I think you're very right. Stigmatization around the failure concept, the failure word is really, really high. All right, moving on. So diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is a slightly long question that I have, and I'm just going to be laying bare my own thoughts on what all would I want you to throw light on. So we all understand that diversity and inclusion are pivotal today and that diversity and inclusion at a first level, I would like to understand why is it a must do? And who really gets the spotlight in your organization's diversity strategy? I mean, what specific groups do you guys focus on? And can you highlight not only the successes, but also the lessons learned in fostering inclusivity? I think I'll start with a disclaimer. We haven't figured it out at Ether. Okay. Uh, I think we, uh, when I started in 2017, I think I always say this, we, at that point of time, we were a chest thumping male, young organization. So, and, uh, and also an engineering organization. Okay. So you understand that, what that this means, you know, from there, for us to realize, uh, it is important to have a different, different people coming in and working uh, and uh, and we need different competence to build an organization from an R&D to an organization that is a path you know and that path is possible only when you have uh, different people coming in to work I think it took time for us you know so but good thing about Aether is the moment we realized we said okay how do we work on it you know first we were a little upset that we have this issue while it was very obvious that we look like boys club, but still to accept that this is an area we have to work on takes time in reality. I think that is what took time for us. Then we have put in steps to say, how do we work? I think ageism, gender are very close to us. And, uh, and also uh, diversity of thought is very important. And engineering versus non-engineer. How do you find your space and your voice in an organization that is very focused on engineering? Okay. Right. I think these are the areas that we worked on and uh, questioned each other, tried to put. And when we say diversity, it has to go back to your policies, process, systems, infrastructure, all of that. For you to even say that uh, you are at a place where uh, you can question saying, why is the numbers not increasing? See, if you are not putting all of that in place, that means you're only talking about it, you know. Talking takes you nowhere. You have to put the money where it actually matters for you. Absolutely. So are you saying that the, the situation on the diversity and inclusion front now has been transformational from where it was in 2017? And if so, what role has HR and the top leadership played in it? Also importantly, is there a role that the investors have played in it? 
do you also feel pressure from other stakeholders who may be you know uh, today driving some of these agenda points diversity being one uh, invest the investors might be looking at us but uh, at ato what happens is the moment we know this is an area of that we have to focus on we don't need a pressure coming from anywhere because we create we are very self critical you know we just beat ourselves then we say how do we work on it you know so uh, we 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 went through the path of creating an inclusive uh, uh, environment you know uh, and how do we build and uh, also talk about leadership in in the workshops that we did in leadership development we actually put this as one of the area where we talked about it we looked at the way we are hiring the type of questions we ask during hiring process and the even the and we started measuring every part of this to say how how is it you know and uh, i think this all helped us in uh, uh, in coming to a place where i do not say we have moved uh, the metrics very uh, very dramatically uh, but we are moving the metric and that is the most important part for us okay beautiful beautiful again very well articulated thank you sunita so moving on to and bringing the elephant in the room sustainability is the buzzword of our times right and i wanted to know how do you know how does the organization at an organizational level how do you guys see it shaping the leadership agenda in e mobility in general and perhaps you could also cover the industry at an industry wide level what really is the vision for a greener future we do understand when we are talking the word e we are already talking green right but for a company which is already green you know is sustainability really the new north star for top leaders across the industry and what is your own i mean tell us more our uh, true north is anyway in the space of electric and you know so yeah. that is but what is sustainability you know is it about uh, the question that we ask about ourselves is is sustainability attached to the material world only is there sustainability that is attached to the uh, organization also the how do we create a purpose driven organization where human relations are also very important to look at you know where uh, there is sustainability attached to that part of it also uh, for us that was also something we looked at we looked at all uh, all encompassing not just only the the supply chain the manufacturing the product and uh, and the infrastructure not only those parts we also said how do you create a chaotic organization okay where is there is order and there is also chaos and how do you work with it you know because it is a new uh, industry that we are working with and sustainability is very very important for us then how and culture is very important to us these are two uh, two areas that we want to disproportionately focus then how do you build bring this together how do you create an organization that is purpose driven okay where people are all aligned uh, to something greater than themselves and the organization is the purpose of us coming together and working is about revenue market share or is it something beyond that so that's the thing that drives ether you know uh, right. okay. why people come to ether and work is just not about their job because they will find the type this type of job anywhere else but they come because of the culture and the type of the ways of working at ether okay? and that ways of working is about sustainability in the human relations it is about sustainability in not only about the product we put out there but it is also about uh, the way the system and at the subsystem level how we work with each other right so tell me sunita there are two very important things that you touched upon here one is culture and the other is that you said that there is a clear transformation from a mindset where it said you know there is a certain era when we believed if it ain't broke do not fix it and then there is this new one where we are saying move fast and break things so when you say that there is a conscious strategy towards chaos this sounds very this sounds more dramatic than anything that i've heard during our conversation so what exactly do you mean and give us a, an example or an anecdotal story maybe you have see one thing is one of our value at ethor is move fast and don't break things it is uh, it is very difficult to move fast and but not 
uh, break things, but we tell them that you can hold both uh, together and it, it is an and and not uh, one against the other or it is not an or, it is actually an and. And it is very difficult initially for people to understand because it's one of our value. Uh, when we say move fast and don't break things, what we are talking about is showing high ownership. You take risk but take risk based on high ownership. You know, you're not taking the risk because the money is available. You're you're given an empowerment to make the decision. But your ability to think through, think deep, and say, okay, at this point of time, this is important for the organization for the product. I will take that risk, and the risk is taken with a lot of ownership backed. You know, and uh, accountability backed, and that is what we drive people to say that uh, at Ather. Ownership is one of the most important aspect that we we say that we don't have layers and layers of leaders, managers, managing people. Uh, there's a lot of team members. We hire people who, who have high resilience and ownership so that they are able to go through this process. When we yeah. say chaos and order, what we say is because your ability in our product development, that to hardware engineering product development area, there will be chaos. And there has to be a method to this madness. You know, there has to be an order. Then how do you hold both both of them together to deliver uh, results? You know, how do you right. the cross-functional teams to come together to de to work on a single purpose? Okay. Right. That's what we talk about. Right. Beautiful. So I am going to be shifting gears and I'm now going to be shifting focus on Sunita Lal, the person, right? And I, uh, we all know the stellar career graph that you had, but uh, for the audience, I think it's important to know and all of us experience it at one point or another in our lives. Every leader faces these defining moments, right? So can you take us through your journey briefly and share your story of triumph over, I don't know, a few of the toughest challenges that may have kind of reshaped your path, got you to pivot, some leadership trials that you could share with us? Um, see, one of the things I generally in my journey I have seen is um, being a HR head is like uh, you being a traffic commissioner, you know, because everyone who is in traffic thinks that they can do a better job than the traffic commissioner. Okay, Because they are in the traffic, they know something about traffic. But the same thing, everyone thinks that HR head job, they because they deal with human resources, they think they know the job better than me. That is, that is common, which I see. Uh, so how do you as a HR head listen to it, but have your own plan saying that this is where the organization is. This is where it has to go. And this is how we have to work towards it, you know. And how do you hold the picture in mind and put the action towards it? I think my journey has been largely um, about uh, being very centered. There will be an ask from the investors from founders, from the CEO, from the CXOs, from the employees and uh, the HR team themselves. But still, uh, you how do you be uh, how do you find uh, the the centeredness in all of this and keep the organization in mind and work? I think that is the challenge every HR head has, you know, and some find it very easy to do it or some people like me actually read, tear my hair and become gray and finally figure it out in some path or the other. I think that is it. And in Aether, particularly uh, when I joined, you have to remember that uh, the founders were very young. And mm -hmm. um, so how do you work in an organization where your manager, because it is uh, it is a completely different uh, picture in your mind, you know, what what is the CEO or a founder or your manager, what you have in mind to actually what they are. Uh, and you have to still give the role holders there uh, because they are the role holders and have them there and work with it and uh, respect them for the for the role they are holding. And over a period of time, forget about the age and go beyond that and keep discussing. I think these are the new things that I've learned in, from 2017. I think a large part of it is because the founders being very clued on to culture. It, my job was very easy. But yeah. um, for leaders out there, I think this is one thing we all have to realize that the picture in mind that we have is going to change. Okay, as uh, as we move forward, uh, 
it, it is not going to be the same. What does what do you mean by your senior? What do you mean by your leader? What do you mean by your manager? All those pictures will change. I think for a HR person, I think this is going to be a very interesting phase. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so tell me, I understand that the founders that you work with were young and perhaps continue to be young for sure. And I'm sure thereby the average age of the organization would also be in the range of about 28, 29. So I guess. So maybe it's a good idea for us to know more about, you know, Gen Z and some of these people that you work so closely with is it a challenge how big a challenge it is and do you have a message for this new young generation of leaders who are now coming into the work roles this is my last question incidentally i don't have a message for them but i have a message for probably my generation or the one who's coming after me um to realize that uh, keep your mind extremely open okay uh, the new generation will come uh, and they will behave like a little bit like uh, uh, rebellious uh, young adults. Uh, but that's going to be the reality. And how do you work with it, you know? And uh, the old frameworks might not help us. The wisdom will help, but the framework might not help. So going back uh, to the books also will help all of us. I think it... Uh, it is important for us to go back to books, to read, to look at what is happening around us and look at uh, how, what are the changes these generations are bringing in and then work with the system is the most important piece. You know, the new, new generation are going to be the uh, different. Okay, They're going to be absolutely different. And for them, the next generation is going to be different. Okay, So we got to realize that differences are going to be there. And then how do you still come together and work? And that's why our diversity uh, uh, collective is called uh, Mosaic in uh, Aether. It is, it is a Mosaic, you know, and we have to realize that. Beautiful. Very nice. All right. So this has been great. What an exciting conversation for sure. And I think there are some clear takeaways that I can see here. The green playbook the e mobility playbook is very clearly global in nature and the 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 green landscape i would say looks promising lots of challenges lots of opportunities that you shared with us a volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous world looking at innovative ways new immersive experiences new technologies new business models new leadership strategies new hr strategies and new culture and what have you so really really thankful to you and we were, of course, privileged to have with us today Sunita Lal from Aether Energy. Thank you, Sunita. You rock. My personal thank you for agreeing to speak at the Ashang Desai Center for Leadership at IMM Dabar. Thank you. Thank you, Piyush. Thank you. Thank you.